secret agent, K-7, returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, as all who read know, gold shipments from one nation to another are not unusual. Gold is moved for many reasons. In the regular course of trade, to transfer large supplies out of nations that fear aggressors, and sometimes to pay for the purchase of munitions and supplies. Recently, such a large shipment was made, and the spies of one nation seized the opportunity to further weaken the strength of the country to which it belonged. My old friend John Holbrook will introduce the story. Thank you, K-7. The diplomats of a nation that feared its neighbor decided to move their gold supply to another country for two reasons. First, they wanted to assure its safety. They also wanted it available for the purchase of defense supplies. Spies quickly picked up the information and planned a coup. What they didn't learn was that Special Agent Z had been brought in to safeguard the shipment. Our story opens as two men plot in a small continental hotel room. This will be our final blow. It will cripple their country. You know of their plans? Only that they are going to ship a hundred million dollars in gold. The gold is already being loaded. The ship sails tomorrow night. You, Bellholm, are to sail with it. What is their plan? You and another who will come in today are to stow away. When the ship reaches mid-ocean, you will set it afire. A fire? You mean to send it to the bottom? Yes, and with it will go down an entire nation's gold supply. It will cripple them. Our army need only march in. But a silver, what will happen to me if the ship goes down? Uh, it will be easy for you to get into a lifeboat in the excitement. They will think you are a passenger. But it is dangerous if the lifeboat shouldn't be picked up. You are under orders, Bellholm. Do you understand that? I don't want to die. Don't be a fool. After your work is finished, you will get into one of the lifeboats. Some passengers will be missing. You will not be recognized and you will be picked up within an hour. Here, we have supplied you with a passport. Take it. I don't like it, Silver. You will do as you are told. Now listen to me. We also have a steward on the ship. You will go aboard and ask for the man whose name is on this paper. He will hide you and the other who is coming. Do you understand? Yes. You will be supplied with six incendiary bombs. The steward will help you place them on the second night out. He will also bring you your meals. Uh, this other one who is to be with me, who is he? He comes from headquarters and will report to you here. Now, Bellholm, I'm going to leave you. If you are successful, you will be well rewarded. If you fail... I will not fail. The ship must go to the bottom. It is vital to the welfare of our country. I leave you now. You will not see me again. As the spy, a silver, left the hotel room, two who had sat in silence in the room next to the one in which he talked removed earphones from their heads. Did you hear everything, Pat? Z, I can't believe those men were actually plotting to send a great passenger liner to the bottom of the ocean. Why, hundreds might lose their lives. Pat, now listen to me. I've got to stay here. When Bell Home goes out of his room, I'll have to get our dictaphone out before it's discovered. What do you want me to do, Z? Get packed and go aboard ship. Your reservations are made. 
Introduce yourself to the captain and carry on until you hear from me. Well, what are you going to do? First, arrange for a silver to be arrested by K-7 after the ship sails. The rest of my plans are uncertain. You may not hear from me until after you're out at sea. That's all, Pat. All right. Now I want you to get out of this hotel without being seen and get aboard ship. Early the next morning, a great ship prepared to sail. As the gangplanks were lowered, Patricia Norwood stood at the bridge rail talking with the captain. Have you heard from Z? No, Miss Norwood. I don't understand it. I was told last night the special agent Z would come to me before I sailed. And he's not here. Something might have happened to him. Although his last word before I left him yesterday afternoon was that he might not get in touch with me until after I was at sea. My message of last night came from the Intelligence Bureau. They said that he'd be here. We should have sailed ten minutes ago. I can't wait any longer. Perhaps another five minutes. It's impossible, Miss Norwood. We must sail now. You may remain here on the bridge if you wish. I must leave you until we're underway. The great ship made its way slowly down the harbor and faded from sight in the morning mist. Pat watched from the rail hoping that Z would overtake them and come alongside in a cutter. However, he failed to appear. Pat was desperate. That night, she arranged with the captain to have the ship carefully searched. She awaited the results of the search in his cabin. Well, we should hear in a minute or two. The search has been going on for an hour. If they find anyone, will they bring them here? Yes. Yeah. Come in. Yes, Stuart, what is it? The search has been completed, sir. The first officer asked that I report that we found no one. Thank you. That's all. There's your answer, Miss Norwood. There are no stowaways aboard. The ship speeded into the night. The captain at last convinced that there was no danger. He might have lost some of his confidence if he could have followed his steward to a supposedly deserted crew stateroom far below decks. It's all right, Bellholm. The search is over. I'll come to you again tomorrow night. We'll be waiting for you. Another 24 hours passed. Patricia Norwood paced back and forth in her cabin. One sentence rang through her brain over and over again. Six incendiary bombs. Place them the second night out. Why doesn't something happen? Why don't I get a wireless message from Z? Something must be wrong. grew quiet as it approached midnight. Passengers went to their staterooms and prepared for sleep. But far below decks, two men prepared to act. Uh, midnight. Stuart should be here to let us out in a minute. What are you doing with those bombs? Looking them over. Well, I've told you how they work. Close the cases. We won't open them again. They're all right. You understand what you are to do. Take three and go forward. When they are placed, you will meet the steward near his lifeboat, number six. I'll join you there. Right. Uh, he should arrive soon. Oh, he's here. Pick up your three bombs. I've got mine. Are you ready, Bellholm? Yes. How long after they are set before they explode? Five minutes. They will give us time to get on deck. All right, get started. This way, into the hold. I'll meet you at number six lifeboat. The steward went to the deck. Bellholm went deep into the stern hold. The third man started forward, then circled back toward the engine room until he located one of the ship's telephones. He picked up the receiver. Cabin 5, A deck. Yes, yes, hurry. Hello, hello, Pat. 
Get the captain. Go to number six lifeboat. Hurry, this is Z. A minute or two later, Bellholm rushed on deck and joined the steward near number six lifeboat. Is that you, Bellholm? Yes. Where's the other one? He should be here any minute. He's had time to place the bombs. As soon as the fire siren sounds, we'll get number six lifeboat ready to launch. The ship will come to a stop. Yes. One of the bombs is under the turbines. We won't wait for the captain's order to launch the boats. Yeah, here's someone. Put up your hands, both of you. There's someone with us. Yeah, the captain. You're both under arrest. Keep your hands over your head. Here's a third man. Put up your hands. I've got you covered. You won't need your pistol, Captain. Z. Captain, this is Special Agent Z. You, a special agent? Yes, Bellholm. I arrested the man who was supposed to work with you when he came to your hotel to meet you. I also took his credentials. Z, you've been posing as a spy. That's right, Pat. I came aboard with Bellholm as his assistant. Miss Stewart hit us in the cruise quarters. I didn't get a chance to get in touch with you, Captain, or with you either, Pat. And we thought you'd missed the ship. But, Agent Z, why didn't we find you when we searched the ship? Your steward can answer that. He led the search in the crew's quarters. And now let's put these men in iron. Z, what about the bombs? I fixed them so they won't explode. We'll get them in a minute. Captain, let's take care of your stowaway and steward. I'll feel better when I see them in iron. <laughs> Thus ended a plot that might have caused the sinking of a great ship with the loss of many hundreds of lives. It might also have spelled the financial doom of a nation had the gold shipment gone to the bottom of the ocean. When the ship landed, a simple paragraph appeared in one of two newspapers. It read, The gold ship arrived on schedule this morning despite fog. One stowaway was discovered at sea. The trip was uneventful. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking.